Hello everyone. In this video I hope to teach you how to use semaphores in Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This is not a complete, in-depth explanation, but I believe it is a good place to get you started. I used to struggle with train signals, and once I learned the three golden rules, I got to a place where setting them up is the least of my worries when it comes to building a well-designed rail network. We will learn about what blocks are, the two kinds you want to have in your network, and the ones you want to avoid. We will also cover the two main types of rail signals, when and where to use them, and how to properly set them up around a junction. In the end I will show you a couple stations, and how to, and how not to set them up for smooth operation. So, let's get started. First we'll talk about blocks. They are these different colored segments on your tracks, that appear whenever you select one of the semaphore options. They are separated by the signals, and usually only one train is allowed to be inside them. They are essential to ensure smooth flow of traffic on your railroads. You might have noticed that the colors are not random. The blue ones are continuous pieces of track, with one signal at each end. Usually one of these signals is an entrance to the block, the other one is an exit. These blue blocks will be the most common part of your network, this is where trains get from one place to another, as well as use them as cues if they get stopped by a signal for some reason. Orange blocks are the junctions. They have one or more tracks that split off, separating the original track into multiple new branches. Purple ones indicate that two junctions are placed adjacent to each other. This is a situation best avoided, because the way signals work will cause unintended behavior. To fix this issue, you can remove the signals separating the two junctions, essentially merging them into a single, bigger junction. But this isn't always the best option. In this case, the resulting junction is way too big and trains will spend too much time inside. Sometimes completely rebuilding the entire area is the solution that yields the best results. So, let's talk about signals. There are two main types. The first is the regular signal. They will check if the block that they lead into is free or not. If there is nothing in the block, the light will be green and a train can roll in. But if it is already occupied, the light will be red and no more trains are allowed to enter. These signals will serve as a way to break long stretches of tracks into smaller blue blocks, as well as exits to junctions. I will explain why later. The other type of semaphore are chain signals. Apart from checking if the next block they lead into are free or not, they will also check the exit signal, and only allow a train to enter the block if the exit is also clear. They are essential in making sure junctions work without a train getting stuck inside, which can result in the whole network grinding to a complete halt. I will explain the way they work when we set up a junction. One of the remaining two options is the so-called mixed signal. As you might have guessed, they are a combination of a regular and a chain signal. Clicking them again will only change the direction. They will be most useful when creating track segments that meant to be two-way instead of the ones we have now that only allow a train to go one way. The last button is the double semaphore option. They are a convenient way of setting up these one-way double tracks, where trains always drive on the right side. Normally to do this, you'd have to click several times to place down a regular signal, then to turn it the right way. If the tracks are placed right next to each other, you can use the double signals to do the same with a single click, because the game will automatically place the correct signal with the correct orientation. So, let's put all we learned into practice. Here we have a blank junction. Since there are no signals, it is considered one single block, and there is no color overlay on it. As soon as we place the first signal, it gets its coloration. As I have said before, regular signals go on the exits of a junction. In this example the network is right-hand drive, meaning trains will drive on the right side of the double tracks. So we start by placing the exit signals, making sure that we adhere to the side we want our trains to drive on. Next we place the chain signals. For proper setup, they need to be the entrances to the junction, pointing in. That way if a train arrives at one of these chain signals, it will check if it has an unobstructed way towards the exit, that will take it to its destination. If there is another train in the exit block, or if it would cross paths with another train inside the junction, the chain signal will not allow the train to enter. But if the exit block is free, the train will roll right through. This will ensure that trains only enter the junction itself, if they have a clear way out. If we placed regular signals as entrances, they would only check if the junction itself was empty, not the exit. If the exit was blocked, the train would get halted inside the junction, not allowing anything else to enter, grinding the whole system to a halt. While it waits, trains coming from other directions might have their own exits free to use, and be allowed to enter. Which bring us to the third point. To ensure smooth operation, 
always leave enough room after an exit signal that can accommodate the full length of any train that will ever use that piece of track. If the train was just a little bit too long, the end would still be inside the junction, causing all sorts of unnecessary red lights. These are the three golden rules of using signals in this game. Number one, chain signals to enter the junction. Number two, regular signals to leave the junction. And number three, leave enough room after the exit, so if the train gets stopped inside the exit block, no cars will remain in the junction to cause problems. If you keep these three points in mind when placing signals, your network will work fine. Incidentally, remember the purple blocks I warned you about? This is why they are problematic. Chain signals have to be entrances, and regular signals have to be exits. If two junctions are right next to each other and there is no blue block separating them, it is unavoidable to have signals that would have to be both regular and chain signals, pointing the same way. Now that we have the knowledge on how to use signals around junctions, let's see how they can be used around stations. We start with a simple one train setup. Let's say we have a situation, where we have a station that will only ever need a single train to enter. Maybe it's an industry that produces high value goods at a slow rate, so there is no need for a quick rotation of multiple trains to pick up the goods. This is where the mixed signal comes in handy for the first time. After branching off the main line into a single track, making sure to place the correct signal types, we can use the mixed signals as both an entrance and an exit for the branch. We only have to orientate the mixed signal so that the chain side is pointing into the junction, and the regular side pointing out. Only this train will ever use this particular branch, so there is no danger of it getting in the way of another train wanting to use the same track. Here we have a two-way station. We have to build a crossing before it to ensure it is able to accept trains and allow them to leave. Right now, if a train rolls in, they cannot leave because the only track they can use is a one-way track, so they need a way to cross over to the side that allows them to leave. Crossings are just another form of a junction, so they need to have chain signals as entrances and regular signals as exits. Mixed signals also make an appearance here, since they are required to ensure that both platforms can be entered and exited. This setup allows both platforms to be entered if the traffic is high enough, and both platforms have a clear way of reaching the side of the tracks that will allow trains to leave for their next stop. Incidentally, I quickly mentioned before that chain signals will not allow trains to enter the junction, if they cross paths with another train. As you can see here, there are moments where two trains enter the crossing at the same time. That is because the chain signal recognized that there is no danger of them crossing paths, so both are allowed to go through if their exit signals are also green. Now you might be tempted to use this crossing setup at both ends of this station. As you can see here, that would be a bad idea. This kind of deadlock occurs when one of the platforms is already occupied, and two more trains arrive the station at approximately the same time. Since one platform is free to use, the chain signals are green from both directions. Both trains enter their respective crossings, but only one of them will be allowed into the platform itself. The train that didn't make it in time will be stuck inside the crossing, not allowing anyone to enter or leave the station in that direction. To have a roll-in, roll-out station, you can have it set up in a way that only allows trains to enter the station from one side, and only allow to leave on the other. Still making sure to adhere to the three golden rules of signaling, we can set this station up in a way that allows both platforms to be used. Also, you can see the importance of cues in action. In a heavy traffic areas, it is a good idea to break the tracks leading up to the station into smaller blocks, so multiple trains can wait their turn when both platforms are occupied. And that's all there is to it. Keep to the three rules, and use them to build your railroad that will keep your republic running smoothly. You can use them to build all sorts of complicated rail setups. I will leave you with some footage of my trains running on my network in my current game. If you found this video helpful, or just interesting, leaving a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make another one. Until then, have a great day, and see you in the next one.